Hi, my name is Jim Maxson. I'm a senior application engineer for SPX Flow Technology, the Lightning Group. We're here at WEF Tech uh, 2013 in Chicago to talk about mixers in the waste and water treatment application. They include flocculation, aeration, equalization, neutralization, uh, anoxic, and uh, anaerobic mixers. Our scope of the supply will include the motor, the gearbox, the shaft, and the impeller. With the exception for the motor, the gearbox, shaft, and impeller are all produced at our manufacturing facility in Rochester, New York. The design of the gearbox comes from years of experience both in this market and in other markets. And it's in, in addition to designing for torque, we also have to design for fluid force acting on the shaft and impeller system. This is done initially in our pilot scale facility in the lab to our 8 and 10 foot tank in our medium size all the way out to full scale in the 50 foot test tank. This is also verified the uh, laser lab and CFD modeling work in the R&D project labs. Not displayed here, we do have a complete line of portable size mixers which are used for small blend tanks from 100 to 500 gallon tanks. The Series 10 mixer is used for flocculation, um, anoxic mixing, anaerobic mixing, and they're typically in a range of 1 to 30 horsepower. Our next size mixer, which is our right angle medium duty gearboxes, will start at 1 horsepower and go up to 75 horsepower to get into a larger application such as, such as sludge mixing. And then finally, our largest mixers, which are starting at the 50 and going to the hundreds of horsepowers, are typically used in the aeration industry of this market. Lightning's most significant contribution to the mixing market is our impeller technology. We revolutionized the industry a number of years ago by introducing the high efficiency axial flow impeller. This has replaced older type impellers for mild blending and solid suspension applications and introduced a power reduction of about 40%. In addition to that, we then introduced a composite style impeller, which further helped reduce the sizing of gearboxes and shaft design by our lower weight composite material. Going down to the aeration impellers, we introduced the A245 and the R335, which replaced pseudo down pumping impeller designs with actual up pumping impeller designs, which actually increased mass transfer and reduce power requirements for the industry. Our latest innovation was the clean edge impeller design. This was the end result of numerous requests by customers to help us eliminate rag buildup on the leading edge of their impellers in anoxic mixing tanks or sludge tanks. Next, we're gonna show you a demonstration of how this works. Here we have a setup of a side-by-side -side conventional A510 axial flow impeller and our new clean edge impeller. In this tank and in the other tank, we started out with fibrous material, typical mop head, about one inch in diameter, one inch length, and charged both tanks with this material. In this tank, what happens typically within 10 or 15 minutes, this piece of rag wraps around the tip of the impeller and forms a nucleus. And then once that starts, the rag propagates completely across the impeller and the impeller come, becomes engulfed with the rag material. Conversely, on our clean edge impeller, when the rag comes down and tries to grab the blade, the blade is wide enough where it cannot wrap. It takes and slides along the edge of the impeller and then gets discharged off the end of the impeller. If you look closely at the the flow pattern in the tank, you'll be able to see this actually occur in action. In addition to the impeller, since we solved that problem, what we're introducing today at the show is our clean shaft technology. This is a stationary piece of pipe that runs from the mixer mounting surface all the way down to the impeller. What this does is it provides a stationary barrier where typically in the conventional 
impeller design, we got a rotating shaft which allows the rag to build up, get caught on the shaft, either stay on the shaft or move down on the shaft. The stationary impeller and the stationary shaft doesn't allow that to happen. The advantages of the impeller and the impeller system is that this impeller will either have a breakage of the impeller, the shaft, vibration may occur and cause breakage potentially of the gearbox. In past installations, we've pulled out these impellers and have had as much as 500 pounds of rag buildup on the impeller itself. In addition, both impellers were initially set up with the same speed, same diameter, they had the same flow number and power number, so they should be drawing the same power in both applications. On the left, this impeller is drawing around 2.6 watts currently. On the right, this impeller is drawing about one and a half watts. So we've been seeing an increase in power draw on this impeller between 50 and 100%. This will either cause the motor to fail or cause you to trip.